How Boomains came to the lady, and went he came to the castle, the gates were closed against him, and of the words that the lady said to him. Now turn we unto Sir Beaumains, the desired of Linnet, that he might see her sister, his lady. Sir, she said, I would fain ye saw her. Then Sir Beaumains all armed him, and took his horse and his spear. He found their men, and rode straight unto the castle. And when he came to the gate, he found there many men armed, and pulled up the drawbridge, and drew the port close. Then marvelled he why they would not suffer him to enter. And then he looked to the window, and there he saw the fair Leoness, that said on high, Go thy way, Sir Beaumains, for as yet thou shalt not have holy, my love, unto the time that thou be called one of the number of the worthy knights, and therefore go labour in worship this twelfth month, and then thou shalt hear new tidings. Alas, fair lady, say Beaumins, I have not deserved that ye should show me this strangeness, and I had weaned that I should have right good cheer with you, and unto my power I have deserved thank, and well am I sure I have bought your love with part of the best blood within my body. Fair courteous knight, said Dame Leoness, be not displeased nor over hasty, for wit you well your great travail, nor good love shall not be lost, for I consider your great travail and labour, your bounty and your goodness as me ought to do. And therefore go on your way, and look that ye be of good comfort, for all shall be for your worship and for the best. And purdy a twelve month will soon be done, and trust me, fair knight, I shall be true to you, and never to betray you. But to my death I shall love you, and none other. And therewithal she turned her from the window, and Sir Beaumains rode awayward from the castle, making great dole. And so he rode here and there, and wits not where he rode, till it was dark night. And then it happened him to come to a poor man's house, and there he was harboured all that night. But Sir Beaumains had no rest, but wallowed and writhed for the blood of the lady of the castle. And so upon the morrow he took his horse and rode until Undern, and then he came to a broad water, and thereby was a great lodge, and there he alighted to sleep, and laid his head upon the shield, and betook his horse to the dwarf, and commanded him to watch it all night. Now turn we to the lady of the same castle, that thought much upon Beaumains, and then she called unto her Sir Gringamore, her brother, and prayed him in all manner, as he loved her heartily, that he would ride after Sir Beaumains. And ever have ye wait upon him till ye may find him sleeping, for I am sure in his heaviness he will be light down in some place and lie him down to sleep. And therefore have ye your wait upon him, and in the priviest manner ye can, take his dwarf, and go ye your way with him as fast as ever ye may, or Sir Beaumains awake. For my sister Linnet telleth me that she can tell of what kindred he is come, and what it is his right name. In the meanwhile I and my sister will ride unto your castle to await when ye bring with you the dwarf. And then when ye have brought him unto your castle, I shall have him examination myself. Unto the time that I know what is his right name. 
and what kindred he is come, shall I never be merry at my heart? Sister, said Gringamore, all this shall be done after your tent. And so he rode all the other day in the night, till he found Sir Baymoons lying by a water, and his head upon his shield for to sleep. And then when he saw Bormains fast asleep, he came stilly, stalking behind the dwarf, and plucked him fast under his arm, and so he rode away with him as fast as ever he might upon unto his own castle. And this uh, Gringamore's arms were all black, and that to him longeth. But ever as he rode with the dwarf toward his castle, he cried unto his lord, and prayed him of an help. And therewith awoke Sir Bowmans, and up he leapt lightly, and saw where Sir Gringamore rode his way with the dwarf. And so Gringamore rode out of his sight.